It is 8.30 on a Monday morning, and I am going to uh, give my morning update as to what's going on. A really quick update. This one, I promise you, will be very, very quick. And uh, Athens time, 8.30 Athens time. That would make it 8.30 Kiev time, 9.30 Moscow time. So um, not much to report on the on what's going on on the ground. No maps to show, no... Uh, no update on the military operations. I hear there's uh, more corridors that are trying to be worked out, but you have both sides saying that the one side obstructs the other. The Ukrainian side is saying that the Russians are obstructing, thing, the Ru obstructing things. The Russians are saying the Ukrainians are obstructing things. Uh, there have been uh, a couple of hundred of people uh, that have managed to, to get out of Mariupol, though the situation has been described as uh, uh, a disaster, a humanitarian disaster. Things are getting really, really bad. Food, water, electricity inside the city is, uh, it's not looking good um, for the residents of Mariupol and an evacuation is going to have to happen and both sides are gonna have to work out some sort of uh, a viable solution in order to get uh, people out. So um, Kharkov is an intense battle going on. Uh, the Azov, uh, from what I understand, the Azov guys are, are pretty dug in. They're pretty entrenched there. So, you know, it's uh, it's still surrounded and it's going to be a tough battle. And, uh, you know, the uh, 60,000 troops, 60,000 plus or minus in the east, in that big cauldron of, uh, of Ukrainian military uh, that, that is trapped in the east is, from what I understand, that cauldron has, has locked into place. And... Uh, now the Russians are going to start to, to heat up that cauldron. Um, and, and that's pretty much the, the, the outlook as to what's going on. I, I have heard reports that the Russians, actually the military defense has said that they took out an air base in uh, Venezia, which is a little more to the west. And that the Russians are making a move to create a big cauldron in and around uh, Odessa as well. So, uh, you know, you've got the... The port, the sea is, is controlled by the Russians and that cauldron in Odessa is also locking into place as well. So um, that's the situation there. I've heard that the, there's negotiations to get troops from Kharkov. If the, if, uh, the Ukraine military and the Azov guys voluntarily leave, voluntarily leave Kharkov, they'll, uh, they'll make their way, they'll retreat to Kiev where they will be allowed to, to kind of make their last stand. I don't know, whatever, whatever that would entail. But um, that's the situation on the ground. And uh, if anything changes, I'll, I'll have another update. But um, it's interesting that they uh, hit an airbase in uh, Venezia, a little towards the west. Um, Zelensky government says that was just an airport. The Ministry of uh, Defense of Russia says that was being used to uh, to launch attacks. Um, the Russian government does say that they have full control of uh, the airspace, of the sea. And Putin came out with a statement and said that the demilitaries, the demilitarization part of the operation, has almost uh, completed. So we have that as well. He also came out with a statement and said that um, if Ukraine continues to uh, to prolong this war. This is Putin's words, Putin's words, and I'm paraphrasing. So this is what Putin was uh, saying. Then the, um, the Ukraine state, as we know it, is, uh, is at risk of, of not existing. That's pretty much what he said. So that would hint that if this continues to get prolonged and if the, the U.S. policy of some sort of prolonged insurgency with, uh, with a government in exile, if that's the strategy of the of the collective West of uh, the U.S., then that would mean that you would probably have some sort of new state uh, forming there, according to Putin. So you look at you look at what the West is uh, is objective is, which is the insurgency side of things and prolonging this conflict, and then you look at Putin's statements, which are, well, if that's the case, then we're going to have a new uh, state um, made up from, you know, say everything from the Dnieper East. Then, then that's that's where we're we're heading towards, and uh, you know the West is interesting, but to be quite honest, nothing more has been done towards the uh, towards the West other than the bombing of Venezia. And there's a lot of people saying that Putin's going to go all the way to Lviv, 
And of course, there's other people that are saying he's including what we're kind of thinking is happening, and that is that Putin is going to use the West as some sort of enclave. Um, and he's going to put all the Azov guys uh, uh, there, and they're just going to put them in a box. And I can see the logic in, in, in both. The one side says, if you're going to complete this, the military, the denazification goal that you've put in place, then you have to go all the way to Lviv. But the other argument is, well, uh, you denazify the areas that matter to you and that you can control and you can administer. And then you, uh, instead of having all these Azov guys spread out throughout the country, you, you, gather, you gather them all up and put them in one place. So you know where they are at all times and you kind of just box them in and you can keep them there and they're not kind of spread out throughout the country and uh, stuff like that. Anyway, uh, we also have the interesting news of uh, the fact that the Biden White House is uh, two things, two things coming out from the, from the Biden White House. The first thing is that they're actually now going to Venezuela and they're begging and that's what they're doing. They are begging, <laughs> they are begging Venezuela to, to, get, uh, to get oil out there, to start getting the oil out there. Uh, they're going to work with Venezuela, maybe remove some of the sanctions and some of the restrictions to get Venezuelan oil out so that it could relieve the pressure of the oil price, oil price given the sanctions that they placed on Russia. And uh, they're doing the same with Iran. They're trying to get the JCPOA completed and, uh, and signed up so that they can get Iran off of sanctions so that they can get oil into the market. So once again, they can somehow ease the pressure of... Uh, of the oil price and gas prices, which are just skyrocketing. And isn't it funny, ironic, uh, that, uh, that the Biden White House is having to actually go to Venezuela and to Iran, both of which are uh, allied with, uh, with Russia. They're allied, say, with the Russia, China, East. Um, they're going to them in order to help, <laughs> to help with the sanctions that they placed on Russia and to help with the spike in oil prices. It's, I mean, what does that tell you? It's, it shows to me that the Biden White House did not really think this through at all. They didn't really think this through um, because their plan, this is not their plan B, C, or D. This must be like their plan Z to go to, to Venezuela, to actually have a delegation fly to Venezuela, meet with Maduro, and to, uh, you can't sugarcoat this, to kiss his ass, to kiss Maduro's ass so that Maduro can help uh, with the oil price. That is exactly what they're doing. And it's, who knows what Venezuela is going to do, but I, 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 I would, I imagine that Maduro probably has a smile from here to here. Um, they, they didn't think this through. They didn't think this through. And the same goes for Iran. Iran is sitting pretty now because they see that the Biden White House wants to get the JCPOA wrapped up so that Iran can start selling its oil on the market in order to relieve the price pressure from the Russian sanctions. And it, 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 this is desperate. That's the only way I can look at it is that this is desperate. And uh, you know that Iran and Venezuela, you know Maduro is uh, calling the Kremlin as well. And they're talking about all this and you know they're coordinating this. You know that once the American delegation left Venezuela, when they flew out of Caracas, that the first person that Maduro called was Putin. I'll put my money on it. And the, probably the second person he called was Xi Jinping. Or maybe all three of them got on a, got on a conference call. This is, they didn't think this through. The other bit of news that uh, is going around is that the Pentagon is talking about the Zelensky government in exile and that they're making plans to get Zelensky out of Ukraine. But the interesting part about it is they're saying that even as, if Zelensky doesn't make it, they're hinting at a Zelensky deletion. You know what I mean? As a Lesky deletion, even if he doesn't make it, they're saying that they're going to still set up a government in exile with or without Zelensky. And, uh, you know, Zelensky's cabinet is uh, full of actors and screenwriters. I mean, it's like a, a TV show. His cabinet is like a TV show. When you, when you look at the names that are in and around him, and it just makes you wonder what the hell is, is going on. You have the president of the United States who's, you know, running the White House from a soundstage across the street from the actual White House and you have a Zelensky government, which is made up of, of an actor and his whole team and cabinet are, are actors and screenwriters and TV producers. And then you have all these Azov guys, you know, surrounding them. 
you know, you could say the muscle, and then you have the Blinkens and the Newlands, and behind the Blinkens and the Newlands are the Hillary Clintons, and behind the Hillary Clintons and the Clinton Foundation, you have, you know, a whole set of oligarchs, Ukrainian oligarchs, and uh, you can take this all the way back to Russia Gate and Ukraine Gate and Binmin and Shalupa and, you know, all these people that, uh, that wanted to, uh, to destroy Trump. It's, the whole thing is Hunter, Burisma, the whole thing is just, uh, I mean, what a, what a freaking mess. What a mess this has turned out to be. Um, this is, I'm not talking about the war here. I'm talking about the, the politics, the palace intrigue of it all. And uh, I, just, I think it's an interesting comment from the Pentagon saying that they're going to set up a government in exile with or without Zelensky. I mean, what are the plans for Zelensky? Is, I mean, do, are, do they have an understanding that the Russians are going to delete him? Are they saying that they're going to delete him? Uh, are they going to get him out? I don't, I don't know. Just very, very odd statement all around. You know, like I said, it's... You, you have a Zelensky government that we're start, starting to get details of the team in and around him. And, uh, you know, this is not a real, you know, administrative team. It, it, it was his production crew from his TV show. And they were just kind of, you know, transferred over into the government. And uh, very, very odd. Anyway, um, I'll look for a link which has the names of all the people in his uh, cabinet. So you guys can, can take a look there. And uh, that's the video, uh, thedoran.locals.com, everybody. And uh, look for Alexander's channel, my, uh, um, thedoran.locals.com. Look for Alexander's channel and keep an eye out for our live streams. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>